and welcome to FPL Mates, your best made for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and it's time for our Game Week 31 episode of Buy, Sell, Keep, Avoid. Yes, guys, Game Week 30 is only just finished, but with the Tuesday deadline, we've got to start thinking about the next Game Week. So guys, if you enjoyed this one, drop a like, do subscribe if you're new around here. Let's have a look at the rules of the video. So buy some players you probably don't have, but should consider bringing in. Sell some players you probably have, but should consider removing. Keep some players you might be thinking about removing, but I think you should keep them and avoid some players that are pretty hyped up right now, but I think they are potential traps that should be avoided. A quick look at our scores from last game week. So in general, I think last week went pretty well. I am recording this video before the Arsenal versus Man City game, so I've put some question marks on a few of these players as we don't quite know what their scores are going to be yet. But in general, we saw particularly the attackers really coming off with Salah and Izak in the points as well as Solanke. In terms of clean sheets, though, this has been a much more difficult game week to navigate with none of the big uh, players really keeping clean sheets. Only Aston Villa so far with the clean sheet points. But uh, we'll see what happens in the City versus Arsenal game there as well. But in general, not too bad for the buy, sells, keeps and avoids. Let's see what we can do for game week 31. So I think for a goalkeeper, Raya is probably the goalkeeper that stands out right now as a, uh, a goalkeeper buy, I suppose. We've got Luton up next. We've got Brighton and Aston Villa after that, which I don't think are two bad fixtures, really. And then after that, we've got that double game week against Wolves and Chelsea, which I think is going to be really, really nice uh, for for, uh, for for Arsenal to try and get some more clean sheets because defensively, they have just been brilliant. I know a lot of people already own the likes of Saka and Gabriel, but adding that third Arsenal uh, defender or player, I guess, would be very, very useful indeed, particularly with Saliba and Ben White maybe being a little bit too expensive. Raya, you have that nailed on 5 million kind of defensive asset for Arsenal and you can potentially pick up some points that way. So it might be the best way of getting that third Arsenal player in for that double game week. I will put Ike Nori here as another buy as well. Really, really unlucky not to get a goal in that game against Aston Villa. He is just so super attacking at the moment. He's definitely a defender we want to be having a look at, particularly in this fixture against Burnley. I know Burnley obviously got a couple of goals against Chelsea, but on another game week, you would imagine that Burnley would continue to struggle a little bit for goals. I don't think Wolves are actually too bad defensively, probably around mid-table, maybe slightly above that kind of area. But the big thing with Ait Nouri is not just the clean sheets, it's the attacking potential that he really does possess. He is a phenomenal attacking wing-back, uh, often is a big part in the attacks and is one of Wolves' better players as well. Got that substitute and therefore rest against Aston Villa, so he should be back ready to go against Burnley once again. After that, the fixes are pretty decent again. Again, West Ham, Nottingham Forest, and then finishing off with a double game week in game week 34. So this next period of four fixtures, I think it's phenomenal for Ait Nori if you're looking to buy a new cheap defender. Lots of people have sold Saka recently, and I do think if you did sell Saka, then this is the week to bring him back in. I think in general, you know, if you've got your two Arsenal players already, or maybe one Arsenal player in your squad at the moment, it is time to start adding them back into your squad. Saka against Luton really, really could cook, considering that Luton are a team that do concede chance. Sid Saka, another player on penalties as well, which is really useful to have after that. Again, Brighton, Aston Villa, I don't think these are as tough fixtures as maybe they were earlier on in the season. And there's definitely going to be opportunities here, uh, you know, finishing off with that double game week. I think this is a really nice run to bring in Arsenal players. So some of you guys may also consider Erdegaard or Kai Havertz if you wanted to go for a different kind of route there. Martinelli potentially as well. There's definitely lots of opportunities for Arsenal right now. And I would be looking to bring in those players for this next run of fixtures. And Darwin Nunez is going to be our final buy here. Uh, he was rested around the 82nd minute today, so he will, should be good to go against Sheffield United. I think Liverpool still don't quite have a full enough squad to really be resting and rotating the likes of Darwin. And we know he's first choice by this point. I think there's been a, a lot of kind of criticism maybe of Darwin in the past that he is kind of a player who maybe doesn't finish all his chances. But the, the stats do suggest this season that he is tracking around the same as his XG. Like he is finishing the chances that he should be finishing. He is a player who gets a lot of chances, though, and I think that maybe kind of uh, puts people off a little bit. You know, you see him missing chances, but actually he's maybe missing some low-quality chances, but finishing some of them as well. Uh, in general, when you've got a game like this against Sheffield United, it is a game you want to go for. Manchester United after that, Crystal Palace, and then a nice double game week. So this is the time to own Darwin. I think there is some obvious forwards you might want to sell in order to bring him into your team. It, again, like Arsenal, we want to be tripling up on Arsenal, and we want to be tripling up on Liverpool as well particularly those of you guys who are not free hitting in game week 34. But even if you are free hitting in 34, Saka, Darwin, these are still players you probably do want to have in your team for this next run of fixtures.
Ariola is a potential sell here, a potential injury issue that he has picked up this game week. And out of all of the goalkeepers, I think this is a great opportunity to sell him. You know, even if he is available for this Spurs game, it's not a great fixture for a West Ham defence that really, really does concede so many chances. They are uh, one of the weaker defences of the Premier League. And well, as all of us, I think all of us are probably looking to bring in a goalkeeper who either doubles in 34 or 37. And oops, Ariola doesn't have any double game weeks left this season. So if you're looking for a new goalkeeper, Ariola is a very easy player to sell if you have that money in the bank to maybe make a little bit of an upgrade here. No matter where you're going, there's definitely other goalkeepers that will be more tempting to us right now. We can hopefully start picking up some clean sheet points, even though they were difficult in game week 30. I think there are some opportunities in 31. And Alex Moreno would also look to sell him with the Aston Villa team facing two really tough away fixtures in Man City and Arsenal over the next three. It's not a great run of games. Even Brentford and Bournemouth, both teams that can potentially score goals. I think Aston Villa, despite being the, the clean sheet team of game week 30, have uh, struggled a little bit defensively and they are conceding more chances now than uh, they have been doing for the rest of the season, pretty much. And uh, yeah, Alex Moreno, I think is just an easy player to sacrifice. Again, these Aston Villa players, bad game weeks coming up, no double game weeks for the rest of the season. It's a very good time to release them from your FPL team. Keeping the theme on West Ham and Aston Villa, Bowen, despite his heroics in game week 30, I would actually be looking to sell him at this point. I don't think the Spurs fixture is horrible at home, but when we look at some of the other midfielders are on offer at the moment, I think there is better opportunities out there. And despite the fact that Bowen has got so many attacking returns recently, it has been massively, massively an overperformance. You can see here, guys, only 1xG and 0.87xA. So that's a total of 1.87 expected attacking returns returns and yet he's more than tripled that um, over this period of games which is quite insane this is not sustainable I'm not saying Bowen is uh, you know not going to score any more goals or anything like that he will get the odd goal or assist here and there but when you look at the other options when you look at the lack of double game mix when you look at the underlying numbers which actually aren't that good it is very very easy I think to steer away from Bowen and start to look at some of these other great attacking assets that we do have uh, as potential buys this game week and Watkins he has picked up a potential injury as well uh, I'm not exactly sure if he is 100% ruled out for this Man City game but given that it is only in a couple of days time you do have to wonder okay you know, he's, he's picked up an injury. He's been, uh, you know, subbed at half time for Aston Villa. And now we've got a couple of days. Is he going to be ready for Man City? Well, even if he is, what is the best we're hoping for from here? Because we've got Man City, Arsenal in the next three away from home. Even if he is available, is he going to get that many points? Is he going to justify that 9 million price tag? And I don't know if he necessarily will. So Watkins, definitely an FEL asset I do admire. I think his underlying numbers are decent enough. They're certainly good enough. Uh, they're not uh, insanely good at the moment, but they are good enough. But the potential injury combined with the fixes, I think is a good enough excuse to remove him from your team, free up a little bit of money by doing that and look at some of these other attackers that we potentially would be looking at at the moment. Darwin in particular, Watkins to Darwin seems like a super obvious transfer transfer move for pretty much all FBL managers to be looking at making this week. I know some people might also be looking at Izak. Again, Watkins to Izak, a potential move you could make if you are free hitting in 34, for example. Izak is a player I'd be looking to bring in for Ollie Watkins. So this is one of those uh, keeps where I kind of don't like the fact that we do the review after every single game week because actually I don't think Allison is going to be playing against Sheffield United this game week. But as far as I know, he is going to be back very, very soon. And if you can, if you own Allison right now and I know a lot of you guys do still have Allison in your squad I think you can afford to bench him for maybe this game week he could be back the following game week and after that we're gonna have the Crystal Palace game I think he should be back for that but it looks very likely that he's gonna be back for Liverpool's double game week and I think he's probably one of the more appealing kind of players to go for for that double game week because when we look at Liverpool defenders you probably look at Bradley, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Robertson, you know, all of these players are have that little bit of uh, rotation risk, I suppose. Whereas Alisson, assuming he is back for that double game week, and it looks like right now that he could be, I think he's going to be one of the, you know, the, one of the best real, really players to own for that double game week. You know, Alisson and Van Dijk are the two nailed on kind of defenders in that Liverpool team. So I would really, really try, if possible, to keep Alisson, even though I don't think he'll score any points this game week. Just bench him for a couple of game weeks. And by the time we get to game week 34, I think you will be the envy of a lot of other managers who 
uh, do not have Allison because I kind of wish I had Allison for game week 34. I think that sounds amazing. And you have that opportunity. You just got to roll with a couple of game weeks, maybe of him being uh, unavailable. But after that, I think it's going to be great. Uh, Kieran Trippier would also look to keep him. I know he was not back for game week 30, but judging by the comments made by Eddie Howe, it was very close. It was touch and go. And, and Trippier is very, very close to returning to this Newcastle team. With Newcastle picking up even more injuries with Lascelles now ruled out for the rest of the season and beyond. Trippier is going to be more crucial than ever. And the next couple of fixtures, Everton and Fulham, look pretty nice. Now, particularly if you are free hitting in 34 and you are looking for those double game week players all the way for game week 37, I think Trippier is actually stands out as one of the better defensive picks for that game week 37 double game week. So if that's the kind of strategy you're planning at the moment. I think Trippier is going to be the kind of player that you actually might be worth holding on to. We saw Everton actually really poor against Bournemouth. You know, hardly any shots on target throughout that game and really fortunate to even come away with one goal from that game. So another team that is struggling to score goals that even a team like Newcastle, I think, could potentially be trusted to keep a clean sheet in this game week. Not saying it's going to happen, but when you add Trippier's attacking threat, assuming he's back, we'll wait for more comments. I think he's worth keeping unless he is uh, ruled out for certain. James Madison, I would keep. Uh, I think he, I thought he played pretty well uh, in game week 30. Obviously, got that early substitution, which was a little bit disappointing, but it was close to getting bonus points in uh, in that game week as well. And actually, I, I probably should check whether he actually ended up getting bonus points in that game or not. But he was at two bonus points uh, at the time he was substituted off, despite no attacking return. So that kind of gives an idea of how important he is to that Spurs team. The next run of fixtures are really nice. And I know a lot of people might have to sacrifice the likes of Son this game week if they're looking to bring in, um, you know, maybe maybe a, a Saka or a Salah or someone like that. And you do want to make sure you are still invested in the Spurs attack to a degree because these fixtures are nice. So if you are looking to release Son from your team, which I know is going to be very, very difficult to do and, and a lot of people will keep him, which I completely understand if you're able to keep Son. But it would be nice to have Madison in there if you do find that you have to remove Son from your team because these fixtures are decent. I think he has been pretty good, you know, good enough, certainly good enough. And when we, when we look at the fixtures later on in the season where Madison will be nailed on, for two double game weeks coming between 35 and 37. If you can hold on for him to him for that long, I think that you're gonna, you know, you're gonna really benefit from that. Of course, if you are not planning a free hit in game week 34, you might be more tempted to sell him, but I would try and keep him if possible until that blank game week in 34. Solanke, another obvious keep for me, very, very obvious. Uh, I think he's he's actually doing pretty well at the moment. Been unfortunate at times to not get attacking returns, but he did score a goal in game week 30. Could have actually got a second goal in that game as well, but uh, unfortunately, that did not happen. Up next, Crystal Palace and Luton back to back and a double game week in 34. Fantastic FPL asset to own throughout this period. So even if you are looking at Isaacs and Darwins, I don't think I would be selling Solanke in order to get those players. I think Solanke could even do better than both Darwin and Isaac over the next four. Uh, don't quote me on that one, but uh, he's definitely going to be competitive with those kind of players and is well worth keeping. So Chelsea and Manchester United face each other this game week. So I would probably be looking to avoid both of the uh, defence from those teams. Onana, uh, yeah, actually, again, Man United are pretty fortunate to to uh, only concede one goal in that game. I know that the, the goal they did concede came late on, but I think um, when we look at these next couple of fixtures, I don't particularly like them for, for Onana. I think if you were going to buy him, last game week was probably the game week to do it. Uh, if you haven't got Onana yet, I would probably leave him for a few more game weeks and then look to buy him slightly later on in the season because these three fixtures are probably, um, you know, this is a, probably the toughest run that United have for the remainder of the season. I know they play Arsenal later on in the season as well, but this is the kind of the toughest run of fixtures for uh, Man United and Onana. So I would probably give him a miss now if you haven't picked him up already. If you already have him, I think he is fine to play. You know, he's going to get save points. That is one thing that he has been doing very well. Uh, but in terms of expected goals conceded though, Man United are way up there and I do expect Chelsea to score against them. So not really the week to buy Onana for me personally. Uh, Malo Gusto potentially picking up a little issue as well in game week 30 which again because this next game week game week 31 is so close to game week 30 I wouldn't be too surprised if Gusto is unavailable for that game week so despite the fact I think in general he is a fantastic FPL pick you know really really attacking super uh, super good on those bonus points as well playing really really well you know he he, he he did really well this game week in game week 30 however 
that potential injury issue, the fact that this Manchester United game is not the best fixture, I think those two combination of factors, I would maybe wait one more game week and then look to bring in Gusto for Sheffield United. Of course, if you already have Gusto, you keep him. A player can be an avoid and also a keep, um, but I would not say Gusto is a buy this game week and therefore he is an avoid. So uh, yeah, wait one more game week uh, before bringing in Gusto. After that, Sheffield United and Everton, assuming he is available for those game weeks, you want him. You definitely want him in your team and he's going to be a, a fantastic option for those fixtures as well. I think I would look to avoid Kudu. Similar reasoning really to Bowen. Uh, we are seeing an overperformance here. The overperformance is not as significant as, as Jared Bowen's overperformance. Actually, Kudu's has better data than Bowen. Um, but again, looking at this this uh, next fixture, Spurs is not the easiest run of fix, uh, easiest fixture. Wolves away, Fulham at home, Crystal Palace away. They're not like those real prime fixtures that we love. They're, we're not talking Lutons and Burnleys and Sheffield United's here. These are kind of like the mid-table fixtures potentially there. So they're okay but uh i think again better opportunities elsewhere other players with double game weeks i i love the fact that kudu's dominated game week 30 thought he did really really well but not really the kind of player i'd be looking to pick up planning forward with an fpl team and hoyland i'm gonna put him down as an avoid as well tough fixture next of course against chelsea and um yeah, I just feel like this is, is is possibly not the time and place for him with these next three fixtures. They're, they're, they're a little bit tough. I think Hoyland is definitely going to have a place, uh, you know, where we talk about him maybe in game week 34, even though he doesn't double, has that Sheffield United fixture. Certainly in game week 37, we're, ex we're expecting Man United to have a double then. But for now, I watched that Manchester United game and uh, I wasn't too convinced, to be honest. Uh, Hoyland not really getting a sniff at goal, really. And Manchester United quite poor in general and when you combine that with the next couple of fixtures, I think it's a little bit of a risky transfer to go for right now. And I think there's potential other options to go for. You know, Isaac, if you are free hitting in game week 34. And of course, Darwin, if you are not free hitting in game week 34. I would much prefer to go for those players rather than a Hoyland at this moment. So he is going to be our final avoid of the video. In general, guys, once again, it is super hard to give kind of uh, uh, advice to everyone that will work for everyone. A lot of what you do is going to depend on your chip strategy and there's no right answer. There's going to be several different paths you guys can take. But as long as you kind of are aware of them all, I think you're going to do just fine. And as long as you're enjoying the game, then uh, yeah, you are always winning, as I always say. So yeah, that's what I've got to say today. Let me know what you think about my uh, players and where I've placed them. If you think I've got things right or wrong, always interested to hear your points of view. And if there's any other players we didn't mention, in today's video please leave a comment and we'll try and put them in their own category as well are they a buy a sell a keep or an avoid we'll see we'll see that very very shortly and guys if you did enjoy this one make sure you did do do leave a like or did leave a like and do subscribe if you're new around here we're going to be back uh, actually tomorrow for a 100 experts video and then we're going to do a team selection video on tuesday uh, and then finally a deadline stream so still a decent amount of content we're going to put out for game week 31 despite the quick turnaround so looking forward to seeing some of you guys there uh, thank you so much for watching once again and i will see you later mates